Hey Divi creators, thanks for stopping by and checking out our documentation for the Divi Post Slider module. The Divi Post Slider module can be used to display recent blog posts, reviews, featured projects, inspiring quotes, upcoming events, and more. They can be big, small, fixed width, or full width. This module also supports parallax backgrounds as well as full width video backgrounds. The slider can automatically animate through the slides or be set to manual navigation. In this documentation video, we will explore how to use the post slider module and all of the content and design settings available within the post slider module. Let's dive in. Let's start by navigating to our page and enabling the visual builder. This will reload the page into Divi's drag and drop interface. Hover over the post slider module and click the gear icon to bring up the module settings. Module settings are always grouped into three broad categories, content, design, and advanced. Within each tab, settings are further sorted into groups, which can be collapsed or expanded with ease. Many of these settings are available in all or most of Divi's modules and have their own separate detailed documentation. So in this video, we'll stick to settings or settings groups that are unique to the post slider module. First, let's look at the content settings groups. The first settings group is also called content. This is where we can edit and configure the content of the module. First is post count. Choose how many posts you'd like to display in the slider by typing in a numerical value. Included categories. By default, all categories are included in the post slider. However, you can select one or multiple categories to include while excluding the ones that aren't checkmarked. Order by. Here you can choose how the posts are ordered by new to old, old to new, by title A to Z or Z to A, or a random order. Button. Here you can type in a custom button text instead of the default read more. Content display. Here you can choose to show an excerpt of the content or show the entire content. Use post excerpts. By default, this setting is toggled to yes indicating that the module is pulling the excerpt content from the respective blog post excerpt meta box. When this setting is toggled to no, an excerpt will be automatically generated based on the first characters in a post's body. The next settings group is elements. Toggle these options to yes or no to show or hide the elements. You can do this for the arrows, controls, read more button, and post meta. The next settings group is Featured Image. Here you can toggle yes or no to show or hide the featured image. Featured Image Placement. Featured Image Placement allows you to choose the placement of the featured image as a background, to the left, right, top, or bottom. The remaining settings groups, link, background, and admin label, are common amongst all or most of Divi's modules and have their own separate detailed documentation, so we won't go over those here. Please refer to the written documentation for more information. Now let's look at the design settings groups. The first settings group is overlay. This is where you can add an overlay to the module by selecting from your site's color palette or by using the eyedropper icon to find a new color. You can also add an overlay to just the text by toggling this next option to yes, triggering the text overlay color and border radius options to appear. The next settings group is navigation. Here you can choose the color for the arrows and dot navigation. Next is image. Here you can style the look and feel of the images in the module with settings like rounding the image corners, adding a border, styling that border, adding a box shadow, and adjusting the image properties like hue, saturation, brightness, and more, including 16 blend modes. The next settings group is text, where you can set the overall text styles of the module, like text alignment, text color, and text shadow. The next three settings groups all have the same font styling options, with the exception of the title text that has the option to set the heading level. The rest of the settings are the same. Let's quickly go through them. First, we have font, font weight, font style, text alignment, text color, text size, letter spacing, line height, and text shadow. These are all commonly used font styling options that most users intuitively understand. However, you may be less familiar with letter spacing and line height. Letter spacing controls the amount of space between letters. The higher the number, the more space. 
Likewise, line height controls the space between text lines. The higher the number, the more space. The next settings group is button. By default, buttons inherit global styles. However, you can change the button here by toggling Use Custom Styles for Button to Yes, triggering the following options to appear. First we have Text Size, then Text Color, Background Color, Border Width, Border Color, Border Radius, Button Font, Font Weight, Font Style, Button Icon, Icon Color, Icon Placement, Button Alignment, Text Shadow, button margin and padding, and button box shadow. Button box shadow is different than button text shadow in that it applies the drop shadow effect to the entire button container rather than just the text inside the button. The remaining settings groups, sizing, spacing, border, box shadow, filters, transform, and animation are common amongst all or most of Divi's modules, so we won't go into detail for them here. For more information, please refer to our written documentation. Now, let's look at the advanced settings groups. First is the CSS ID and Classes settings group, which allows you to apply unique CSS IDs and classes to the module and style them via your child theme style sheet or the custom code area in Divi's theme options. The custom CSS group also allows you to apply custom CSS to certain elements within the module, like the main element, slide description, slide title, slide button, and more. Attributes. This specifies the value of your link's relationship attribute. The attribute is the relationship between a source document and a linked document. This is helpful to specify because search engines can use this attribute to get more information about a link. The more information search engines have from your website, the more accurate placement you'll have in search results. The rest of the settings groups here conditions, visibility, transitions, position, and scroll effects all give you powerful and granular control over how and when this module is displayed. However, since these groups are common in all or most of Divi's modules, they have their own separate documentation. You can visit the written documentation for more details. And since that brings us to the end of our post slider module settings, I'll click the green check button to save our edits. Then exit the visual builder to view our new page. And that's it for our post slider demonstration. Before you go, check out all of the design tips and tricks we have for the post slider module over on the Elegant Themes blog, which is linked in the video description below. And don't forget to check out the rest of our documentation at elegantthemes.com slash documentation so you can be on your way to mastering Divi.